Hello my friends, I'm Vicki Parfano for Aussie Stampets and today I'm going to show you how to do feather jelly printing and I'm going to give you lots of examples not just of how to paint and print on the feathers themselves but how to create masks with the feathers and then I'm going to show you some projects where you can use what you've made and create some art journal pages or cards with these things that we do today. Now I'm using the gel speedball printing kit and it has some designs on the side. It has seven items in it. I purchased this from Spotlight in Australia and it was 25% off. Now it has a five inch by five inch gel plate with mylar and it slips down the back of the box so you can store it back in there. And then it has some printing inks and an ink retarder as well as the speedball brayer. And I love these speedball brayers. I have another one, so that means I'm going to be able to use two. There's a blue, there's a red ink, there's a black ink, and there's a yellow ink. And then there is the ink retarder, which slows the drying time of the ink. So if it's a very hot day, or if you have the heating on and you want the um, drying time to be a bit slower, you can use this. There's an instructions kit and that beautiful rubber brayer, which they're just such good quality, these speedball brayers. I love mine. I've had it for a long, long time, so it's great to have a spare. So there's the kit, seven items in all. I'm going to add in some bubble wrap, which I've cut down to about six inches by six inches. And these feathers that I got from the dollar store for $3 for a packet, and there's so many in a packet, so I'll just pull out a few of those. They're just plain white feathers and that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to be doing some journaling in my field watercolour journal, the 8 inch by 8 inch size and the 6 by 6 inch size. So let's get started on printing these feathers on the jelly print plate. Now I'm bringing in some copy paper because I'm going to roll off the brayer on those. And I'm only going to peel off one side of that mylar and I'm going to leave the mylar on the bottom of it so that it doesn't get anything fluffy or sticky on the bottom. And I'm finding a page in my art journal. I'm going to start on this page here. And I'm going to set it up so that my jelly print is on one side and I'm going to hinge the paper over and print straight on my journal. So I'm starting off with some of the yellow ink and a little bit of the red ink and I'm going to roll that out with the brayer now. And I like to get the ink nice and smooth and you can see I'm not trying to mix it too much. There's a lot of yellow and a lot of red in there and it does turn orange as well so you end up with kind of three colours instead of two which is kind of cool. And I'm just going to do the most simple exercise now. I'm just going to pat on some of that bubble wrap and now I'm going to lay some feathers on top. But before I do that, I just want to ruffle them up so that you get a better impression. Make them fluffier. Now this is the simplest way to get a print using feathers on the gel press. And you'll see it's quite subtle. Because I've chosen light colours too, it's not going to show up quite so well on camera as the darker colours would. But I'm going to show you how simple it is. You just hinge that over and press and give it a good burnish with your fingers. Now this is quite thick watercolour paper so I'm pressing fairly heavily and you can see it gives a lovely subtle effect. It's created an image of the feathers and now I'm going to show you another technique which goes a little bit further and gives you something a lot more dramatic. So I'm using the yellow and the blue this time and I'm not going to hinge them this time. I'm just going to have the same system going with my feathers and my bubble wrap. Now these feathers were $3 a packet. So really you're going to have more than you could possibly need. One of the things you can do with the gel press is once you've used the feathers, you can wash them and dry them and use them over and over again. But in this technique today, I'm going to show you what I do with the feathers after I've used them to make an imprint, how I'm going to print on the feathers as well. So there's two different techniques that I'll be showing you. 
So this watercolour journal is the 8x8 size and it's the same paper on the 6x6 size. So it's quite thick, it's cold pressed watercolour paper, very good quality. And I have a really big packet of baby wipes because they're going to be your best friend with jelly printing. They're great for washing the ink off your fingers and for cleaning up the gel press and cleaning up your brayer. So start with some yellow again. This time I'm adding a little bit more yellow, three this time, and rolling that out. And this is going to be my first colour that I'm going to have with my prints. So whatever you put onto the plate first is what you'll see on the top when you print it. So we've got the bubble wrap and I'm just going to press that across and that's just going to give me a nice subtle little circles pattern. And it, the bubble wrap actually is really fun and it's easy to use and it's cheap because you can always find bubble wrap around somewhere. So save some bubble wrap next time you have a parcel that gets delivered. Now I'm leaving the rest of that yellow ink on there and I'm bringing on my blue. I'm rolling off my brayer because there's quite a bit of yellow ink on the brayer. This is where the copy paper comes in handy. And now I'm just going to blend all that blue. Get it nice and smooth. You can see how I'm rolling and lifting, rolling and lifting. If you just roll, you'll just move the ink from one side to the other without really blending it. So you need to roll and lift. And just the same as I did with the first example, I'm going to ruffle up the feathers and then just lay them on the plate. So this five by five inch plate, <coughs> excuse me, is ideal for my six by six inch art journal because it just gives me a little border all the way around, which looks delightful, I think. So there's my feathers laid out, ready to go. And I'm going to print them and give it a good burnish. Now there is a tool called a Baron, a B-A-R-E-N that print makers use. I do have one, but I wanted to show you that you don't need a lot of equipment with this technique. Now I'm going to line it up so it's roughly in the same spot and you'll see the detail I get. Isn't that pretty? Really detailed. Really nice. I'm happy with that. I did miss a little bit down in the corner but I'll bring some blue paint back to that at the end. For now I'm going to take another print and I'm bringing in my Fabriano Artistico watercolour pad. Now this is gorgeous paper. This is cold press heavy paper as well. And I'm going to just open that up and while there's some print and ink left on the gel plate, I think I'm going to be able to get a good ghost print with this. So a ghost is like, I guess it's like second generation stamping. If you come as a stamper and you'd understand second generation stamping or stamping off, a ghost print on the jelly plate is very, very similar. So let's see what's under here. I think the trick with watercolour paper is you really do need to press hard. If you had just a cartridge paper or a thin paper, you wouldn't need to press as hard. But look, I'm really pleased with that image. It's really gorgeous. I think that's a really nice print. And you can see how the colours are still vibrant, but because the yellow has been used up in that first pool of the print, it's only the blue that's left behind. Now my camera is flickering a bit and I do apologise, I tried always to fix this but I don't know what's going on, there's a lot of sun today. Now I have some shimmer spray, some dilution shimmer spray, I'm going to give it a good shake. This is bubblegum pink and this shimmer spray is by Ranger. And I'm going to place a mask, so this is a stencil from Stampin' Up! And I'm just going to spray over the top of the feather while it's on the plate. Now this is going to give me some fantastic effects. It's going to give me a design on the feather, it's going to give me a design on the plate, and it's actually even going to give me some overspray on the table, which is pretty cool, and I'm going to use that later as well. But you can see how pretty that looks. So the stencil design has been transferred onto the feather. So the feather that was blue is now blue, red, and mauve. So the colors have all mixed nicely. Now I like what's left here, so I'm going to pull another print on my Fabriano watercolour pad and there's so much shimmer spray that it should give me a good result and it does so there's the start of another print now I'm going to add to this 
you can see how detailed it is. I'm going to put that aside and bring that in when I get my next layer done. Now I have this stencil by Little Birdie and it's called Pebbles and I just love this because there's lots of different circle shapes. I really like the way that looks. So this time I'm going to bring in the blue feather and I'm going to lay it slightly differently on the plate. And I'm not cleaning off the plate, I'm not cleaning off anything really, I'm just on the fly with this. This time I'm using the Dilution Spray in Fresh Lime, giving it a good shake. You shake them from side to side, not up and down, because you don't want to clog the nib on this or the spray tip. And I'm just going to give that a spray as well. So this is going to give me a blue-green feather. And you can see that the design of those pebbles is now on the feather. This is really cool. I really like the way this turns out. Now I missed a little bit down the bottom. You can see it's still white. So I'm just going to go in and give that a bit of a colour from what left, excuse me, what's left on the gel plate. So go and do that. And just clean up that little edge. And that feather looks absolutely gorgeous. It has so much shimmer and shine on it. And again, we have a contrasting colour. So there's the green and blue and the blue and red that has also the mauve in it. Now I want to use what's on the plate again. So I'm going to bring back in that same page that I pulled a print from before and I'm going to add a second print over the top of that first print. And look at that. Just lovely. I really do love that. It's got lots of shimmer in it because it's all shimmer sprays. Now here are the feathers and I've taken the plate away and I'm going to clean it all up. Now this is a print that I did earlier which is just mainly blues and I've decided I'm going to adhere the feather into my art journal. But before I do that I want to get some splatters in the background because this feather is printed with some reds and some purples and blues and I thought well if I can bring some of that red it's actually a really pinky red it's the bubblegum pink if I can bring some of those splatters onto the page and I just like to mop them up with a paper towel which helps them spread out a little bit more <laughs> it just saves on drying time too so I don't have to spend too much time with my heat tool drying it all off adding a bit more I'm just Positioning the feather to see what's going to show and what's going to be in the background. And I really like that. I think that looks cool. So a little heat gun action going on. But it's pretty dry because I blotted everything. Now I have this glass effect glue and I love this stuff. It's put out by Viva. It's very much like crystal effects or maybe the fine tip glue but if you're using the fine tip glue I think you would have to put quite a lot of glue onto this. You can see I'm putting quite a thick layer of glue on the back because I want this to, to adhere to my art journal page and I want to pay particular attention down to the end where it's quite thick. And so this printed feather is now going to be a part of my art journal. So just adding that glass effect. And you can see when it goes onto the page, it's just really cute. It's a three-dimensional feather in my art journal and it's got printed design on the front of it and it's got splatters in the background. And the background was one of the first jelly prints I did with some blue paint and some bubble wrap. So that's just the bubble wrap on some blue ink that I used. Now, this is that second piece where I did the two lots of printing and I'm going to put the green and blue feather on this one. So I think I'll put it in my 8 inch by 8 inch journal and there's a spot for it there. So I'm going to cut down that piece because I want to stick it into my journal. So it's now a 5 inch by 5 inch square. Just trimming it down. 
and it fits so beautifully on the overspray that's on my table so that was just a piece of white paper that I was using on my table and I thought you know what I really want to use this as part of the design it's so pretty it's full of sparkle it's got lots of gold and shimmer in it so I'm just marking that up so that it will fit in my 8 by 8 inch journal so because the pages are eight inches square, you've got to allow a little room for the spiral binding at the top. So I'm just going to cut that down a little bit more so that it fits. And I'm bringing in some Dinah Wakely gel medium in matte, and I'm just going to adhere that into my art journal. And now I'm going to put the piece on top and I'm going to let a little bit of that white show through because I want it to feel as though it has a bit of a frame around it, a frame within a frame. Now here's that um, greeny blue feather that I printed. Same thing, I'm using the glass effect on it. Now I have a Vicky Booten sticker book. This is from American Crafts and I've bought several of these from Spotlight stores in Australia. And I like the fact that it has this lovely green that is in the feather. So I'm going to play on that. And I'm going to use this word beautiful. And the thing I like about these stickers is that they are clear. So they don't have a white outline. They're just clear and they sit straight into your journal. And they look really subtle. <laughs> I did tear the top of the B there, so I'm just fixing that. But it's the same green as the feather. And I can see a little butterfly there that I think I'll add in too. So that it, that's another design element that's going to match the feather. And I'm going to burnish the letters with bone folder and this really helps them disappear into the background. Now I quite like the design of this but I feel as though it needs a little bit more balance on the bottom corner. So I'm going to have a look through this book again and see if I can find any other green elements. So there's a little strip here that has butterflies on it and I think if I could have a little strip of butterflies in the green then I think that'll look pretty cool. So I'm just going to peel these off. And I'm going to stick them down in the bottom corner there so that we have a nice balanced look to the page. And it's sticking to my fingers, so I'm trying not to um, get it curled up there. But there, that I think that look is really quite symmetrical and quite pleasing to the eye. So there's my two art journal pages. Now I also have inside this book, this is the first print that I did. Remember I did a ghost print of that first print and it turned out really beautiful. So I want to include that in the projects that I've done today as well. So there they are and there's the other print as well. So I'm going to put a link to some more videos at the end here and you might like to follow on and have a look at those. If you haven't subscribed and clicked on that bell, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you again next time for some more mixed media fun. See you again. Bye for now.